Good morning. Hello, everyone. It is Thursday morning, 17th, and I am just getting on here, hanging out in my room next to my heater. <laughs> Someone I was teaching yesterday was outside in shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> was teaching online here, but he, he said he wasn't cold. I'm like, I don't understand this, but <laughs> okay. How are how are you all? Um, we're in Psalm 14 today going to pray and read through that. Um, let's see, tomorrow's Friday. We should be able to be on here at nine again. Okay. All right, so I'm going to wait and see if anybody jumps on here. If you can find me. Let me send the link. Hopefully we can get this all figured out here since it's been so hard to jump on lately. Let me just put this... <clears throat> connection on Facebook so that people know where to go. All right. Here we are. I am live. I can see myself actually on my Facebook page. That's good. All right. Let's hope that someone will find me. All right. I'm going to get started here. I've put the links a couple of places. It doesn't look like the connection is super strong <clears throat> today. We have a, such a cloud covering. Maybe that's why. Okay. Psalm 14. Empty-headed fool has said in his heart. Empty-headed fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable deeds. There's none that does good or right. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any who understood, dealt wisely, sought after God, inquired for or of him, and requiring him of their vital necessity. They all, they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There's none that does good or right. <clears throat> no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Eat up my people as they eat bread. I don't think I've ever seen this. or I don't remember the scripture. <laughs> and do not call on the Lord. They eat up my people as they eat up bread. There, there they shall be in great fear, literally dreading a dread. God is with the generation of the uncompromisingly righteous, those upright and in right standing with him. You evildoers would put to shame and confound the plans of the poor and patient, but the Lord is his safe refuge. <clears throat> oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When the Lord shall restore the fortunes of his people, and then Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. 
Good morning. I'm so glad a couple of you found me. All right, so this script, this whole chapter is about people being foolish and not believing they need the Lord or that there even is a God. And, um, you know, there's none that do good. There's none that are righteous. I wanted to just read in Romans 3, even though I'm supposed to not be doing a Bible study. But I just want to give you the same scripture in Romans 3, uh, 10. You know, there's different places in the New Testament that they quote. Uh, the writers quote, Paul, in this case, quotes um, Psalm 14. And he says, as it's written, none is righteous, just, and truthful, and upright, and conscientious. Not one, not one person. Not, no one understands. No one intelligently discerns or comprehends, and no one seeks out God. All have turned aside, verse 12, together they've gone wrong and have become unprofitable and are worthless, and no one does right, not even one. So um, it goes on and on there, too. <clears throat> but um, I just want to pray into this today. I feel like um, the Lord is prompting me to pray. Well, we'll see all that happens, but just that we need him. We need to acknowledge him. We need a savior. It is obvious when left to our own doing that we need a savior. So, um, Lord, we come to you this morning um, just reading this scripture, knowing what it would be like if you had not intercepted our lives. Um, there was a point in our lives, God, when we were being, acting and thinking foolishly apart from you and possibly believing that there wasn't a God or just some of us really ignorantly not knowing, never having heard, um, not, not being able to respond to you because we were not, we were in the dark. And Lord, we come to you humbly today and we just say that we need a savior. And we acknowledge that it is truly impossible for us to save ourselves. We acknowledge that we are not able to do enough good or enough right. We acknowledge, Lord, before you that we are not able to live morally and upright and have that be enough. God, we understand from your word that it will take an interception from the work of Jesus on the cross. And we acknowledge fully, especially at Christmas time, that he became man, that he left your side, Father, and that he came down into the earth and was born into flesh and blood and became a baby in a manger, growing up, growing in favor with God and man and stature. And all those years under Mary and Joseph's care and then released into ministry, just three short years. And how, Father, you blessed and anointed him to walk out <clears throat> the assignment that you gave him to be the deliverer of mankind. And we acknowledge that today, Lord. We acknowledge that Jesus, you are our brother, our savior, our king, and there's absolutely nothing we have to offer that will save ourselves. And so we just say to you, thank you. Thank you for seeing us in our need. Thank you for doing what would suffice. Thank you for um, appeasing Father God and bringing us back into the relationship as sons and daughters. Thank you for everything that you've done to bridge the gap between 
the creation and creator. Lord, we come into your presence today with just the understanding that we too could be afar off. We could, we could be left out of your plan. We could be ones that don't know you. And with that knowledge, Lord, we come in Psalm 14 and ask you to send laborers into the harvest. The harvest is plentiful. Those that do not know you, those that have no need of you, those who do not understand what you came to do for them, Jesus. We pray that we could be part of those laborers that bring in a great harvest for you and for your glory. And because, Lord, we just don't want anyone left out of your plan. So we pray, Father, you'd equip us today that we would not be um, sitting in unbelief, that we would not let unbelief even have a moment of our day, that we would look at the foolishness of unbelief and call it out for what it is, even in our own hearts. Lord, I confess to you the places that I have unbelief Help me, Lord. I believe in you. I ask that you'd help me in any unbelief, any areas where I don't see that you are enough, that I don't know that you and what you've done is enough. Lord, we ask, God, that you would come into the places where there are workers of iniquity, where there are people who are your word says, eating people as they eat bread. And they're not calling on the name of the Lord. We cannot fathom this, Lord. We do not understand. Of course, we know the literal meaning of this. And we know that it does occur in tribal nations where they are living in ways that we don't understand. But Father, we also see this too as um, <clears throat> possibly just a reference to the way that our nation and other nations are disregarding life and life in the womb and just going on about their day, having their meals and extravagant parties and, and forgetting that many are dying silently and quietly. And for this, Lord, again, we do repent. We do ask for your, your um, protection over our nation right now and over the other nations of the world where they are. There are many people trying to turn around this disregard for life. Thank you for President or Vice President Pence yesterday as he was speaking up for the unborn. Thank you, Jesus, for all the people who are working to give them a voice. And Lord, we just lay aside our bread this morning and we say that we will be your voice. We will, we will speak up for those who have been given life, that it be not cut off. And Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, that those who are doing these sorts of things and the legislation behind them, and the groups like Planned Parenthood that are being funded by our tax dollars and in other ways, God. We ask, as I just saw someone asking for a donation to the charity of their choice, a young person for their birthday asking for donations to Planned Parenthood, just broke my heart and I, I ask God that you would turn, turn the tide of the narrative in our 
in this historical moment right now, Lord. I pray, Father, you would give a voice to those who are speaking up, that they would get louder and louder and louder. And that every place that eyes are veiled, such as this young person that I know, every place you would take the veils off in their eyes. Lord, we've, we have spoke of the deep woundings and hurts in our own lives that keep us from knowing truth. And we pray that you would address the wounds and the hurts, the sufferings of women especially, who are trying to defend themselves and their rights. Just come into this moment and into this belief system and cultural um, time in our, in our history, Lord and intersect with the love and the understanding and the blood of Jesus and make every thought that is wrong towards you and towards life, make it right again, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask. In Jesus' name we ask, Lord. Let all the evildoers be put to shame and confound the plans of the poor and patient. Let the Lord be their safe refuge. Let the salvation of the Lord be their safe refuge. Lord, we look forward and we say yes to the restoration of the fortunes of your people. We just say restore the fortunes of your people today. We declare it and proclaim it, Lord, and we rejoice and we are glad. We rejoice and we are glad with David. We are we we are glad this morning and we rejoice at what you are doing and what you will do, Lord God. We rejoice at the outcome. We rejoice ahead of time. Declare that good will come of this, that good will come of this, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We pray that you visit the Supreme Court today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're in the courts of several states today. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise you, Lord. Okay, so that is Psalm 14. Tomorrow is Friday and we'll be in Psalm 15 at 9 o'clock. Love you all and have a blessed day. Glad that you're here, Caitlin and Gail. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Whoever else is on, I just bless you. I don't know who else is on, but bless you. Bye-bye, everyone.